Hello, I am Stephanie and today I'm showing you how to sculpt cacti. I made a few different ones, but basically the shape is rather similar. I start every time with the round ball and then shape them into something that is geometric. Sometimes adding spikes and sometimes just adding details. I'm working a bit more on cacti and succulents these days because I'm working on an artwork that is about desertification. Um, it is an artwork that I want to make for an art competition, so I don't know yet how far I will be done by the end of it. Uh, this is still remains to be seen. So here, as I said before, I'm adding some spikes. I used plastic coated wire for that, so I simply cut it in small pieces and I'm adding them one by one and I simply dunk them first in some liquid clay to ensure that the spike sticks nicely to the cactus. It is a fairly simple process, however, it's pretty long. So, so you do need some patience to make that project if you intend to add some spikes. So as I said, I use plastic coated wire. It's beading wire that I found on eBay years ago. You can also use wire, metal wire, if you want to. However, the plastic wire has the tendency to stick better to the polymer clay and it doesn't give up any fumes. I suppose that that kind of wire is head proof. So beading wire basically, something that is rather thin but still holds its shape since you are going to push it inside the clay. As I've said before, I'm working on desertification, which is often one of the forgotten consequences of climate change. Desertification basically is the transformation of viable habitats into extremely dry environments where nothing much grows anymore. It has been linked to climate change and human activities and more specifically to agriculture, which is one of the biggest problems we are facing right now. Like we need food, but it's also destroying our planet. So it's a bit of a complex matter. Here I'm starting on another cactus. I made it pink, so, um, well, what can I say? I just, uh, as, you, as you know, if you follow my work more closely, I tend to use a lot of colors, which I really like. And yeah, pink. I always start to split the cactus in several parts, and then I just shape them so they stick out a bit. It is best to use reference picture when you're working on anything you don't really know. That way you ensure that the shape is right and correct and so you can actually recognize what you're sculpting at the end. The colors can be a little bit tricky as you're going to see. This one kind of looks like a sea urchin at the end. Well, that's just... that happens. <laughs> that just happens. And here I'm adding the base of the spikes and I'm simply making tiny balls of clay. I decided to go on a um, bluish purple, bluish dark purple, and I'm adding all those tiny balls all around. So again, the cacti, this cacti video, and I would say making cacti, it's rather a long process. It's not something you do in 10 minutes. But it's also rather easy once you take your time to do it. So it's not a very difficult sculpture, it just needs some patience. And here I'm just rounding the, the base of the spikes onto the cactus using a ball and a tool. That way I ensure that it's sticking perfectly to the cactus and that it's not going to fall down after baking. Which, yes, it might happen if you don't do it properly. As you can see right now, it's starting to look like a sea urchin. <laughs> so it's, it's really nice and bubblegummy. And here I'm just readjusting the texture so it's not as flat and smooth. 
the surface of cacti is not perfectly smooth like most plants they have indents here and there so I'm just adding some random bits and bobs everywhere and here I'm adding spikes again yay <laughs> this time I added two spikes pair spike base if you look at reference pictures it's usually three to five spikes pro base but that's just too much considering the size of it it just doesn't work out very well however if you are making a very a, a bigger cactus than what i'm showing you here then it might be interesting to make it closer to the reality and to actually add three to five spikes per base and here it's really looking like a sea urchin so at that point i hope i can make it look more cactus-like with the paint at the end after baking. Let's hope that will work. And on this one I decided I wanted it to be really to have the lines go askew. There are many types of cacti and I really like those that were not straight. So I just kind of went for it and as you are going to to see hopefully <laughs> yeah here as you, as you see here I it's not perfect so the first time I draw the lines they're actually not good enough and when I start to sculpt and give it some shape then I readjust the sculpting so this is something to keep in mind when you're sculpting if you first draw something onto the clay and it's not quite perfect then it's not really a problem because during the sculpting you still can adjust and move the clay around and here i'm simply pinching all the edges or i'm pinching all the sides to make edges out of them and at the end i'm just smoothing the surface a bit but also, again, giving it some indent to make it more textured and more natural looking. And here I'm just drawing the lines in between to make it uh, neater. Yeah, neater is the word. Best to take your time with that one if you want a nice shape. At least that's what I think. When you, when you start a sculpture, either you do it right or you, you don't even bother. I mean, what's the point in spending 20 minutes on something and it looks awful if you can spend one hour on it and it looks good? One which is also typical, it looks awful at the beginning, but the more you sculpt, the better it looks. And like the other ones, I basically created some edges all around. I originally divided the cactus in five but ended up adding a few more because it just didn't look quite right. And like the one before, I also pinched all the sides to add some edges. And I'm basically doing the same with the, with the little one, with the tiny one that is going to be put just aside the first one. So the technique is very similar to all the other ones in the sense that I always first divide the cactus in different segments and then I proceed to sculpt them and pinch, etc. so that it's, it actually looks like a cactus in the end. This is also, and I always try to emphasize the importance of using reference pictures, but it is crucial to use them to get the result you want. Unless you've been working on cacti for a few years, or let's say even a few weeks or a few months, you are going to need reference pictures to get the shape just as you want it. And lastly, after baking and letting everything cool off, I proceed to paint everything. So for those that didn't have any spikes, I simply added dots of white paint to give the illusion of spikes and to show the areolas. I simply used a toothpick to add the white dots everywhere, so it's, it's rather an easy process. And on the other one, and actually on all cacti, cacti, I also added a layer of very thin white paint, as usually cacti, especially succulents that don't have spikes. They have a white powder all over them and it acts like a sunscreen. 
so often those with spikes have less of it but sometimes they do and so I added it on all because I think that visually it really reminds cacti more than anything else and for the darker ones I I mixed um, a lighter shade of the color to replicate that white powder effect. Another option would have been to add white pastel before baking, but I really like to paint these days, so I went with that. I also highlighted the ridges with some darker paint, simply black and yellow for the yellowish one. And then I also added some pink lay at the base of the pink spikes just to make it more realistic. And that's pretty much it. I did a few more cacti for my own artwork and you can play around with colors if you wish. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and comment and share to support this channel. Maybe check out my Patreon page and I will see you in my next video. Bye!